If you're a front-end developer, you definitely can relate to this. You're almost done with the web app you've been building for the last week, consuming dangerously big amounts of coffee that cause you sleepless nights, and everything looks perfect. Just one little hack to finish the project. That's definitely how I feel every time this happens. But hacks are just an inevitable part of development. Hacks like negative margins. Negative margins can get some people really annoyed. What it is, is basically giving an element a negative margin instead of a positive one. And some people could argue that giving an element a negative positioning with position relative is a better idea. But in fact, these are two different things. Relatively positioned element actually sits on a different layer and does not interfere with the normal flow of objects. I personally don't have any problems using negative margins because depending on the scenario when you have a display flex or display table, negative margins can be your only good solution. Not passing a radix to the parseInt function. The parseInt function accepts a string and returns an integer value with a specified radix. Radix is a base in numerical system, like base 10 is something that we're all used to and use in our day-to-day -day life, like just the normal numbers. Although the radix value is completely optional in parseInt, linters usually complain whenever you don't pass one. I tend to disable this rule in most of my projects and I think it's totally fine to omit it. But keep in mind that standards are different in every project. And for example, if you're in the banking industry, then you better pass this radix in, in order to ensure high precision. Parse int can sometimes convert your big int into a number and lose the precision along the way. Another point is overwriting arguments in a function. This one is more debatable, I would say, since this is just an immutability aspect. By all practical accounts, it does make sense to me, because it's about keeping functions clean and testable. Folks from the functional programming world would definitely agree with this. But it's a totally fine hack that comes with a little bit of a trade-off. Buttons must have a type. This one is pretty funny. So whenever you have a regular button on a page, you have to write button type equals button, and it sounds kinda silly to me. That's why I usually just leave it out, unless I'm inside the form. Because a button that doesn't have a type will default to a submit button when inside the form, which means if somebody clicks on a button accidentally inside the form, we can accidentally have some unwanted form submissions. Rel no opener in links. A few years ago, people found the security issue that allowed websites that you navigate to find out which website you came from. All of this thanks to the target blank on an ATAC. And in some cases, it was even possible to get the full access to the document that the user came from. The no opener value basically helps to navigate without granting the new context access to your previous page. All the modern browsers Note, Internet Explorer doesn't count as one, have already patched this and using target blank already implies the no opener rule under the hood. So I don't really bother that much about it. Unless again I'm writing code for some kind of an international financial institution or for the government. Inline styles. This one is definitely interesting. I'm pretty sure inline styles have been more painful for older developers than the new ones. Because we've always been told that inline CSS in HTML is just a bad thing. With the rise of frameworks though, we've kinda got used to writing CSS inside components. And compared to the old times, we didn't really have this component-based flow and encapsulation inside our components together with CSS. Meaning back then we usually had a lot of duplicate styles and some messy CSS code. Generally speaking, I try to avoid inline styles whenever possible, but sometimes just sometimes you have a tiny, tiny React component, for example, where you know they're not gonna be touched or changed and contain just a tiny bit of information, maybe just a paragraph. And if it's tightly scoped and doesn't share its styles with any other components, hey, what's the problem? Maybe from a consistency point of view, yes, but I would definitely merge this kind of a pull request. Quick shout out to the Syntax podcast that came up with this cool topic idea. If you hear things about good and bad practices in CSS, HTML or in engineering in general, always question them. Because you want to understand the motivation behind them rather than just obeying them. Many things are not so taboo after all. Feel free to share some of the hacks that you are using on a daily basis and I'm gonna read them. Or maybe just watch this video. It's funny. 
too many people take it really seriously.